Alright boys, how's it going? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and to a Chelsea news video, which I'm delivering to you guys daily throughout quarantine and lockdown, keeping you guys in touch with what's going on around football news and headlines regarding Chelsea Football Club. Yes, it's mainly nonsense, but I'm here to tell you about it anyway. <laughs> Three stories we're going to be talking about today. The first being these, well, it was inevitable, really. Certainly for the link to come out. The Jorginho to Juventus. Sorry, son. Back to father. Is it going to happen? What does it mean? Is there going to be a player swap involved with Federico Bernadeschi? Doesn't really sound so appealing, and I'll be telling you why in a moment. I want to talk about an interesting article that Football.London published regarding Chelsea... Uh, well, Chelsea's ambition to become as good, if not better, than both Liverpool and Manchester United. And that's with adding additional quality, but waiting for the youngsters to flourish. And there's an interesting uh, stat graph thing I want to show you. And finally, the Eredivisie looks like it's going to be void and cancelled. Where does that leave Hakim Ziyech? What's he going to do? Let's talk about that as well. Quick shout out and request that you there go and subscribe or at least check out Yan's Yard, my other channel where I'm doing daily live streams for FIFA 20. That's right, every single day at 6pm I'm going live chatting to you guys and we are building a Chelsea team together. We are setting out a philosophy. We are trying to stay in the top four. Emotional highs and lows. Do come check it out. The link's in the top of the description. Support the movement. It's loads of fun. Alright, let's get on with it. Federico Bernadeschi. Man, I remember a few years ago he seemed like he was a top top baller destined for great things at Fiorentina he had a great season in fact well he scored 11 goals and registered four assists for Fiorentina in the 16-17 campaign it's pretty decent considering relatively young winger at the time playing for that side it's a good return naturally Juventus bought him <laughs> and to be honest man he hasn't really done much since he's 26 now he's barely scored any goals he's not really utilized by Sarri hasn't played that many games and apparently the Daily Mail <laughs> Daily Mail are reporting a proposed player swap between Bernadeschi and Jorginho now before I talk about this I just want to let you guys know that I had some reputable football journalists and people who work in football talk about how this upcoming window we could see a lot more player swaps. Now, I'm not saying there's any particular credit to the Daily Mail story because there rarely ever is any credit behind the Daily Mail. But we can expect, maybe, to see more player swaps due to the nature of the transfer market. So I'm not saying that Chelsea are going to do a player swap necessarily with Juventus. I'm definitely not saying it's necessarily going to be the rumoured Bernadeschi but it could happen. But let's talk about Jorginho quick because this story, as soon as Sari left, everyone was saying about this well you know Jorginho is gonna leave and follow him to Juventus it's such a weird story because Jorginho he won back the fans throughout this season the Chelsea fans sing Jorginho's name in Stamford Bridge they don't sing everyone's name you know they can they don't sing as Piliqueta's name really they sing we'll just call him Dave but not really anymore he leaves you know everything on the pitch every game Jorginho won the fans back. They're always singing, Jorginho. Is it whether because he scored a penalty, or he made a lovely pass, or he's getting into a fight? He won the Chelsea fans back. Does that mean he'll 100% stay at Chelsea? Probably not. <laughs> Well, he could. Frank Lampard clearly likes him, or loves him, in fact. He made him his vice-captain, even though he's only been in the club for a year. He doesn't speak fluent, fluent English. Do you know what I mean? So Lampard obviously values him, but he's still... You feel like we could still survive without Jorginho, especially with Billy Gilmore coming into that position looking, quite frankly, fantastic. Kovacic is deputised in that lone pivot role. Uh, and then Chelsea can play other um, formations to accommodate different roles like Kante in the midfield too, etc. We could survive without Jorginho. It would be sad to see him go, but it could, like, it could happen, man. And most importantly, if it does happen, he'll bring in decent money. Even in this market, if Sarri really, really wants him, he, his value would have only increased since coming to Chelsea and winning the Europa League. So Chelsea could get a decent amount of peas from him. It kind of makes sense, man. I like Jorginho, but you know. Will Jorginho be bummed out? Maybe, but think about it. What a radical journey he's had. Like, awesome Napoli team. Comes to Chelsea, faces adversity. The fans boo him. They boo him coming on. He wins back the fans. Lifts the Europa League trophy. 
everyone's happy and then he's like thank you for my time here it was a growing experience now I'm going to the biggest club in Italy which I was in a title race with before a few years ago and now I can play for them win the Scudetto it's kind of a cool story in many ways for him so it could happen I guess we'll have to see but Bernadeschi Underwhelming. I know Chelsea might be looking for one more winger. It's rumoured to maybe be Jeremy Boger. But if Bernadeschi comes in the player swap, he could be the fourth rotational winger. So it's Ziyech, Pulisic, Hudson-Odoi and Bernadeschi. They're not the worst four winger choices, let's be real. Anyway, we'll have to see what happens. I'll leave it with you guys to decide amongst yourselves. All right, I wanted to shout out this article that Football.London published because they spoke about Chelsea's ambitions to becoming a really, I say big club. Chelsea are a big club, a force in English football again. Obviously, the benchmark at the moment is both Manchester City and Liverpool, and Frank Lampard keeps echoing the sentiment of that's the target. They want to bridge that as soon as possible with bringing in additional quality to the squad, but also nurturing these current youngsters. And, they're, you know, Chelsea's youth, even if not always performing, they're rated very highly and it's speculated that they will perform at the highest level. Now, Football.London on this article posted two graphs. I'll put them on the screen now. They basically indicate that the majority of Liverpool football clubs starters are all in their peak years, whereas the majority of Chelsea football clubs starters are yet to reach their peak, basically indicating that this is the glory years of Liverpool, won't be sustainable forever. They'd have to, you know, rely on superb recruitment and coaching, etc., which they may well do. But it's pretty much saying the best years of Chelsea are yet to come of this generation. Chelsea are in the ultimate transitional year. They've done pretty well to do how well they've done. Well, that's a tongue twister. But, you know, Pedro in his early 30s, Willian, a lot of uncertainty, the old guard going out, the kids coming in. You know, no one could really expect that much for Chelsea. So when everything settles, when everyone settles into the philosophy, when they develop chemistry, they're all the same age, some new quality comes in, they know exactly what they're doing they can really, really challenge. Remember how long it took Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool to get where he is now? Remember how long that took? Years, mate. It took years. So the fact that Chelsea are already fourth, perhaps even one, two years, they could be something similar. Maybe. That's the target. That's the project between Roman, Marina, and Frank. So it is interesting. I wanted to remind Chelsea fans because there is a plan there. When we look at sort of like maybe quiet, underwhelming performances from Tamori every now and again, or Mason Mount goes in and out of form, or something like that, or Tammy stops scoring, people understand that, but they're looking beyond. They're saying, well, you have done that. We've watched you do it. You're still maturing psychologically. We can sort of cultivate these positive attributes of your game and develop you into a consistent beast and that's what could happen to the Chelsea team. Anyway I wanted to just reference that article on this news video because I found it interesting. All right let's talk about the final story and that is Ajax's slash Chelsea's Hakim Ziyech. Yes indeed the wizard of Amsterdam what's he doing right now? Well I'm not sure but apparently the Ajax league the Ajax league? No the Dutch league the Eredivisie is going to apparently become void cancelled well whatever i don't want to like speculate exactly what's happening over there like the admin but apparently it's gonna stop and they're not gonna play anymore apparently where does that leave hakim ziesh can he come to chelsea lead us through <laughs> the rest of the season in glory probably not people have been speculating but he won't be registered to the english competitions or of course the champions league squad or whatever all this kind of stuff rules have been bent in this pandemic so maybe more rules can be bent and he can come and help um, obviously Ajax are in the Europa League so will they continue playing the Europa League I'm not so sure maybe probably I'm just saying even say if they don't play any more football Ajax so he's not gonna like train with Ajax anymore he might as well just come and train with Chelsea surely there's value in that get to know the players hang out with Frank get to know the system do you know what I mean maybe even teach the boys a thing or two with his wicked left foot Surely there's value in that, right? And he might want to get settled in London and like buy his house or rent his house and just generally see Wagwan. I know this is not the time to be flying around looking at houses, but you know, a little bit down the line maybe. Huh? Anyway, obviously we'll keep an eye on that, watch this space, and of course I'll keep you guys updated on football therapy. So there we have it. I want your opinions on all these things I've spoken about today. Let me know your thoughts on Bernadeschi. Would you take him in a player swap? What's your opinion on Jorginho? Do you want him to stay regardless? Do you like him but you're happy to see him go? Or do you see no value in keeping him? Express all your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Make sure if you've enjoyed the content to like the video because that helps me out a lot. It does. And also, 
do go and subscribe to Yan's Yard, link in the top of the description. Join the FIFA 20 live stream movement, it's loads of fun. And then, I guess, follow me on social media, at Football Yannick, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, ladies and gents, that's it from me. You lot enjoy the football that very sadly is not going on at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.